stay tuned guys I'm going to do a quick review of the Polaroid SX70 land camera okay guys so I want to do a review over the Polaroid SX70 it's a wonderful camera I truly never you know quite got it got how you know special it really is until I got one if you really are in, into photography and especially Polaroid instant film it takes the best um, pictures in my opinion of with the Polaroid film it gets you very sharp um, images compared to the boxy 1980s um, plastic cameras we're used to always seeing these were in the 70s when these came out and they were really were revolutionary because they were the world's first SLR um, instant camera uh, cameras so the diff the reason what SLR stands for is it's the single lens refractory meaning you're actually when you look through the viewfinder you're actually looking through the lens so you'll see exactly what the lens is picking up and the clarity the focus and everything it's much easier to focus so to open this uh, camera and as most um, SX-70s you grab back here in the back and just pull straight up and then on this side here you'll have your arm you just keep pulling straight up till it clicks into place as you'll see there it went and now the camera is ready to go to open your film door is this yellow button you just press straight down and your front door will open up like so I do have a brand new pack of film in this so I can't take it out but one thing I really like about this camera is because it's so important to keep your rollers clean is this little door here that folds down when you, the camera's all folded up you just push down and you have easy access to both your rollers and you definitely want to keep those clean at all times it also feels like the rollers here too especially the top one has some kind of coating on it so when you're cleaning them it comes off very easily um, the very front here you have your exposure wheel which you can turn for lighter darker and the middle is there every time you close the camera up to one thing to remember about your exposure it resets back to the middle so don't always think your exposure is still always set when you're taking photos if you've collapsed your camera here's your focusing wheel which I really like about this series of uh, SL, uh, SX70s is that it shows you the inches and the feet the wheel is focused at See? And then one thing that made this camera really unique was it can get all the way up to 10 inches to the subject. And that's really close, especially for back in the, this era of cameras. That was very rare. And your big red button here, of course, is your shutter button. On the bottom here, too, when you're holding your camera, you want to make sure you don't block this little slit here. It's kind of hard to see, but that's where your film actually ejects out is down here at the bottom. And this camera has been completely refurbished by Matt uh, Wyndham. I think that's how you say his last name. I hope I said it right. I'll put a link to his website. He has a really cool website and he does refurbish these and made, does an amazing job. This was reskinned with real wood, not the leather that mo some, well, most cameras are. Here's your viewfinder and you look through there. And this one does have the split uh, circle screen. So it makes it easier to, to uh, focus. What it is, it's, it's two screens in a circle that's split in the middle. And when you're focusing, you want to get both those screens, everything to line up. And that's when you have perfect focus. So it really helps a lot. Then back here is your film counter. That's pretty much the gist of the camera. This is your bellows. And back, especially in the early 70s, these were 100% real rubber. So they'll pretty much last a lifetime. I mean, they're really practically impossible to rip unless you purposely do it pretty much um really the only maintenance on these cameras is just as on most polaroid cameras you just want to keep your rollers clean another few things you have for the camera is here's the traditional flashes you can still find these but they are getting harder and harder to find because they've not been made for many years and these are so bright um another thing too about this camera it's also been converted to go ahead and use 600 film without the ND filters which are these things here and I'll have a link to my description if you want to buy some of these because if your camera's not been converted over then you really need these um, to put on top of the film pack which does this all you do is these two um, big ends here go up here towards the thicker end so you just insert 
this little piece here underneath. Do the same to these side ones. Same to this side. And then the back one. And now your film, your 600 film can be used in the SX-70 if it's not been electronically converted over. So it, it's a nice little, you know, cheap way if you don't want to have to send it in to get it converted over, your camera still works properly. But since this camera was completely refurbished, he went ahead and done that to this camera. So I don't have to use these filters. Because what happens a lot of times too, I've read, is people forget that these are on their film pack and will actually throw them away. So you got to buy them a lot. I guess it happens quite a bit. And one pack comes with two of them. So, and to take it off, you just pretty much pinch it up and pull it out. Now, another thing you can use is by Mint makes this flash bar, which I already did a video review of this flash bar. Um, it's a great flash bar. It is a little expensive, but it is much cheaper than trying to find these because these cost between $12 to $20, just in that range for one. And once when you use all 10 bulbs, it's no good. I mean, you got to buy another one. So in the long haul, this is going to be much cheaper because you buy it one time. Um, the only complaint I have personally with this flash is it takes forever to cycle up. It's not been on for a few days, so we'll just do and show you. It takes like 20 seconds or more. So right now it's blue. We're waiting for the green light. While we're waiting for that too, we'll go over a little bit about the flash real quick. So here's obviously off. The middle one is half power. And all the way over is full power. This is your test fire button to test the flash. But um, if you don't have your camera converted over and you don't have the filters, you can use the half power they claim and you don't, it'll still work with 600 film. Oh, there it finally went. So it took about 20 seconds. So that's one thing you got to keep in mind when you're using this flash is make sure your flash is ready to be fired before you take a photo. Because I have done that a few times now not thinking about it, thinking the flash is on, so okay, it's gonna work, and it wasn't fully charged, and I had underexposed photos. But what I do, since mine's been electronically converted, I still use half power, and I've so far not had to really touch my um, exposure wheel. It's just stayed in the middle, and I've really had no trouble. I've had a few that's been a little bit overexposed, but I can live with that. So this one I really recommend, and I'll put a link in my description too for this flash. It's a really great flash. Um, I got mine on Amazon for like $78 to $80, so you usually save like $10 to $20, cause I think they normally go for $99 still. So check that out. I, I still like these flashes, and I, I buy them when I can find a good deal. I think they're really cool. If you use this flash with the 600 film though, you do have to turn back your dial just a little bit to the darker, just because these are so much brighter. Uh, they really put out a bright flash. And also, too, for the mint, which I already did the video on, it comes with these two little filters, which technically are three, because you have pink, like a yellow, greenish. When you put them together, it makes red. So, pretty cool. Also, too, one thing I recommend to keep in your bag with your camera is if you do have the mint flash bar, always keep a plenty of these batteries. It does kind of chew through batteries. I think it, the, even the box says that you only get like 50 exposures before you need to replace the batteries. So I've not really had that problem because I've not had it for very long. But it does, I, that's what I've read, that it can choose the batteries. So I just keep um, a four to six of these in my bag at all times. Because it does take two right here on the side. Oh, I'll put it on here so you guys can see what it looks like. It just plugs on the top. And there it goes. It, it looks great. I mean, it fits perfectly. And I, have, I really like how it looks, even though it's a modern flash, it still doesn't take away from the classic look of the camera. Another thing, I'll show you what the old classic look looks like, but you can't beat this. That's what the old looks look like back in the day. Really cool still. And I'll do a couple of photos that I've taken through with this camera. I've taken about two packs of film now. Um, Here's my cat. She's usually my willing um, subject. But the, the clarity from this camera is just unbelievable. I mean, I've been blown away at how clear the images are and how close you can get to your subject and really get a nice, uh, even a little bit blurred background. Here's up to 10 inches close to my one of the paperweights. Black and white. Another one. 
And I do have some color ones in here. And there's a color one on my, black, uh, my paperweight. Another one of her. She was not happy with the flash on this one, as you can tell. And another one, this is me. At my work, I found some 3D glasses. Like, oh, we gotta get a picture. So it takes really good photos. I mean, I've been blown away at the quality. Here's one of my favorite ones I did with her. Is they're just so clear compared to, you know, your the typical um, box cameras we're used to from um, the 80s. I hope I had to make a cut in here. I almost forgot to show you guys how to fold the camera down. Here's your little bar. It has a little arrow here pointing back this way. So all you do is hold the camera kind of like this, pull it back, and it all collapses. You'll hear a snap and then a snap. I wouldn't recommend doing this, but your flashes do you know, stay on there just fine. But you have run the risk of breaking off that chip, those um, connectors there, and that's really not recommended. But it does fold down nice with the camera. I mean, that's what it looks like all folded down. But I would really wouldn't recommend leaving it on there. So, all right. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and please share it across your social media platforms. I really appreciate that. Also too, I'll have links in the description for some of the accessories like the flash or the ND filters over here. And also too, I have a link in my description. Please use it if you want to buy film. I highly re recommend you buy it directly from Polaroid Originals because you know the film's being stored properly until shipment. And when you're paying already the price you are for the Polaroid film, it's best to know that you're getting good quality film and fresh film too. And that link also helps me out and also gets you, I think, 10% off your first order. So as always, you guys, thanks for being here and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.